These are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We turn now to the latest case of Maher Arar in a major setback for holding U.S. officials accountable for rendition and torture. The Supreme Court has rejected Maher Arar's lawsuit against the U.S. government. He was seized at New York's Kennedy Airport in 2002 on a stopover from a vacation abroad. Instead of allowing him to return home to Canada, Arar was sent to his native Syria, where he was tortured and interrogated in a tiny underground cell for nearly a year. On Monday, the Supreme Court refused to hear Arar's case, ending his quest for justice through the U.S. court system. But just after the court's decision was announced, Arar revealed a major new development. Canada's federal law enforcement agency, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, is conducting a criminal investigation into U.S. and Syrian officials for their role in Arar's rendition and torture. Maharar says he's cooperating with the RCMP. The investigation opens the door to Bush administration officials potentially facing charges in Canada. Arar's lawsuit names then Attorney General John Ashcroft, FBI Director Robert Mueller, and other U.S. officials. With legal channels in the U.S. exhausted, Arar's attorneys are now calling on the Obama administration and the Democratic controlled Congress to heed Arar's demands for an apology and redress. Just last month, the Obama administration sided against Arar and asked the Supreme Supreme Court to reject his suit. Well, in a Democracy Now! national broadcast exclusive, Mahar Arar joins us now from Ottawa. And joining us here in New York, Maria LaHood, Mahar Arar's attorney and senior staff attorney at the Center for Constitutional Rights. Mahar Arar, let me begin with your reaction to the U.S. Supreme Court uh, rejecting your lawsuit against the U.S. government. I was obviously uh, expecting a negative decision, given, given that uh, lower courts have uh, not sided uh, or have sided with the government uh, uh, on, this, on this case. Uh, but, but obviously, it's, it's extremely disappointing, especially so this is coming from the uh, highest court in the U.S., uh, where this court is supposed to, uh, you know, stand up for justice and, and make sure that no one is above the law. So of course, it's, it's been extremely disappointing for me. I want to start at the beginning. For people who aren't familiar with your case, explain what happened to you when you were coming home from family vacation, just transiting through Kennedy Airport, switching planes to go to Canada, when it was. So it's a long story, but I was basically stopped at JFK Airport, and I was told the uh, it was routine procedure. Eventually, a team of FBI and New York police uh, 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 showed up and they started asking me questions. And they all, they had always told me I was not a suspect. Uh, the the, the uh, questioning lasted for many many hours on end. And uh, eventually, I was arrested. I was not told why. And I was I, I spent that night in a, in a, uh, in a, at the airport. I could not sleep. Next day, they asked me to volunteer to go to Sierra, and then I refused. I was taken to MDC, where I spent about 10 days, and they eventually secretly took me in the middle of the night and shipped me off to Syria like a parcel. And what happened through, there? Through, through, through Jordan. Well, um, obviously, uh, it was an expedite, expedited process. They didn't allow me to talk to a judge, even though I insisted. They they lied to my to my uh, to my lawyer, uh, who my family hired, and they bypassed all the regular procedures. They they basically uh, did not care when I protested my my uh, the fact that I may be tortured when once I'm in Syria. And when tell us what happened to you. Tell us what happened to you in Syria. Well, um, uh, of course, they dumped me in Jordan, a country I have no connection to whatsoever. And uh, it's a known fact now that the Jordanians are cooperating fully with the, fully with the war on terror. And uh, the hours later, they hand me over to the Syrians. And, and the, uh, the, the uh, interrogation started that same day. There was no physical violence the same day, uh, threats and all kinds of verbal threats. Uh, with electricity uh, and, and the chair, they call it the German chair. Uh, but the beating started the following day, where they start beating me with, uh, with with no advance warning whatsoever, with a, with, a, with a cable, electrical cable. And uh, the the most intense uh, beating was on the third day, where uh, for some strange reason they they wanted me to say that I've been to Afghanistan. At the end of the day, I. I 
lost all my all my strength and 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 I I told them what they wanted to hear. Um, so the beating uh, did not stop, but it became much much less in intensity. But but I can't tell in the eyes of the investigators, the Syrian investigators. I don't even know if I can call them that. that they're torturers. That they they were looking for something that uh, they, they, they they wanted to please the the Americans. But but I can tell you after two weeks of of, uh, of uh, torture and harsh interrogation and 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 humiliation, I, I can't tell, tell in their eyes that there was nothing there for them. Uh, Maria LaHood, um, you're Maharar's attorney. Uh, tell us what the Supreme Court said. Well, unfortunately, the Supreme Court didn't say anything. It just completely reject rejected Maher's petition for them to hear the dismissal of his case. So all Maher is asking is, you know, he brought a complaint. The lower courts have rejected that without even letting it go any farther. And we've asked the Supreme Court to hear the case, and they just denied the petition. But they're saying it should be done legislatively.